Coffee is the world's most widely consumed psychoactive drug. Every day, over 90% of Americans consume caffeine in some form. So the question is, does caffeine make you swim faster and how much, if any, should you be consuming? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how much caffeine is in coffee, tea, and energy drinks. Then I'm gonna show you how it impacts your body before, during, and after your swim. At the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you if caffeine can make you swim faster. Now it's important to remember that caffeine is a psychoactive drug, meaning it alters your mood, thinking, and even behavior. It's also a stimulant drug, which means it stimulates your body's state of arousal by speeding up the production of nerve impulses. Now, in an earlier video, I shared with you how alcohol impacts swimming performance, and today I'm sharing with you the truth about caffeine and how much your favorite coffee, energy drinks, and foods have in them. Now, if you eat or drink any of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about in this video, let me know down below in the comments and shout out if you're sipping that coffee while watching this video. Now let's go ahead and talk about coffee to kick things off. We've got brewed, espresso, and instant. Keep in mind, decaffeinated coffee also has a little bit of caffeine in it. So even if you're drinking decaf, there will be trace amounts anywhere from zero to five milligrams per eight ounce serving. Now, if you have an eight ounce serving of brood, you can expect 96 milligrams of caffeine. Now, keep in mind, most people are not drinking eight ounces of coffee. Again, let me know what you're drinking down below in the comments, but from my personal experience of seeing other people drink coffee, it's very common to have a serving size much larger than eight ounces, anywhere from 12, 16, or a venti that's 20 ounces or multiple cups of coffee throughout the day. Now, if you drink a blonde roast from Starbucks that has 475 grams milligrams of caffeine for a 20 ounce serving. That's the venti, that's the largest size you can buy. If you also go to Starbucks and you get the Cafe Americano in the venti, that's also 20 ounces, you're gonna have 300 milligrams of caffeine. Now that's a lot, we're gonna talk about how much you should be having in just a little bit. Let's talk about tea. We've got brewed black, green, and bottled. You can drink that instant. Anywhere from 19 milligrams to 47 milligrams in an eight ounce serving. Remember, most people are drinking much more than this. And again, let me know what you're drinking down below in the comments. So let's compare coffee and tea in terms of milligrams of caffeine per eight ounces to something like a Red Bull or a Coke. So if you take a can of Red Bull, which is an energy drink, these are normally 12 ounces and it'll have 111 milligrams. So if you do the math on that, it's sort of equal to about a cup of brewed coffee. Again, if you compare that to a venti, the venti blonde roast at Starbucks is gonna be much more in terms of caffeine than that Red Bull. But let's talk about Coke. I'm a, I'm a Coke drinker. I don't drink uh, Red Bull or coffee or any of this other stuff, but if I have a can of Coke, which is also 12 ounces, you're gonna have 34 milligrams of caffeine. Now, what about a pre-workout? These are more common in the weightlifting community. These are designed to give you a boost of energy when you're lifting weights or you're doing a workout. And typically in one serving of a pre-workout, you're gonna have anywhere from 150 to 300 milligrams of caffeine. So that's sort of like drinking two to three cups of coffee, but you're getting that in one shot as a pre-workout. You'll also find caffeine in different foods, more specifically in cocoa beans and chocolate. You can also find it in certain kinds of chewing gum. It's absorbed into the system very quickly. And even chocolate flavored or cocoa coffee flavored ice cream and even bagels. So the food and drinks that you consume on a daily basis do have caffeine in them. But at the end of the day, like, is this a problem? Like, is this unhealthy to have this much caffeine or maybe not enough caffeine into your diet? And according to the Mayo Clinic, credible source, up to 400 milligrams of caffeine per day is considered safe in an adult. Now we're gonna break it down uh, how there's different variables that can actually impact that, but in general, it's hard to make a general statement about this kind of a thing, up to 400 milligrams. So as you can see, drinking a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, maybe three cups of coffee, you're gonna be well under that. If you take down two blonde roasts at Starbucks and Venti, yeah, you might have some problems, but don't tell Starbucks I said that. Now, another thing to keep in mind is is too much caffeine actually a bad thing to the point you can get disqualified from a competition? And in fact, the NCAA has a rule against the amount of caffeine that can be in your system and you can actually fail a drug test in competition because of caffeine. So the rule states that you can have 15 micrograms of caffeine 
per milliliter of urine. So you take a pee test after your swim race or whatever it is. And if you have more than that, you'll actually be disqualified and you'll fail the drug test. Now, what does that actually mean? What is 15 micrograms per milliliter? It means you can drink basically up to 500 milligrams of caffeine about two to three hours before I actually pee and get the drug test. So 500 milligrams is a little bit above what the Mayo Clinic considers safe, but that's still a ton of caffeine. Now, before we talk about how caffeine caffeine impacts your body, grab another cup of coffee, and I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Henson Shaving. Henson razors are produced in line with aerospace engineering standards. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of science, and these razors are scientifically engineered to give you the closest shave ever. A single blade reduces ingrown hairs, and Henson razors are specifically designed to hold the blade firmly in place at the optimal shaving angle, and that gives you a smooth and perfect shave every time. Now, as a swimmer and someone who shaves a few times per year for competition, I can tell you just how important it is to have a clean shave. Now I've had the chance to test out the AL13 razor for a few different shaves and I can tell you I feel the difference. Henson razors are made from aerospace grade aluminum and these are going to last a lifetime. So head over to HensonShaving.com forward slash MySwimPro to check out Henson Shaving. You can get 100 blades for free with your purchase and the code MySwimPro. And once you own a Henson razor it's going to cost you about three to five dollars per year just to shave. Now these razors are great for both men and women, so make sure you check them out down below in the description. Now that you've filled up on another round of coffee, let's talk about how caffeine impacts your body. Now I wanna break it down from a few different perspectives, starting with the brain. On a neurotransmitter level, what's happening and then how does that impact your body in the pool? So it blocks adenosine, and that's the neurotransmitter that basically tells your brain that you're tired. So if you block the thing that's telling you that you're tired, you could think, well, now I can push myself harder, faster, and have more energy. That's partially true. It's also going to increase the amount of dopamine. So when you have more dopamine, that's the, the feel-good neurotransmitter. And so we've talked about this before, how it just makes you feel good. So if you're blocking the thing that's making you feel tired, and then you have more of the thing that's making you feel good, well, that's how caffeine impacts your brain. On a hormonal level, it actually increases the circulating adrenaline. Remember, this is a drug. Caffeine is a drug and it's a stimulant. So you're basically stimulating your body to circulate more of this adrenaline in your system. It also impacts your body temperature by increasing thermogenesis. What that basically means is it's going to increase your body temperature and you're actually going to burn more fat because of that. That also impacts the amount of glycogen in your body. So because you're burning more fat and your body's warmer, it's actually going to spare your carb reserves. So if you think about how your body uses energy and you have carb reserves in your system, if you're basically delaying that because you have increased fat burn, you're pulling from fat, you're gonna actually delay the carb reserves and utilization a little bit. From a hydration perspective, caffeine can actually dehydrate you faster because oftentimes these energy drinks, they have sugar and not, not just caffeine, but there's sugar as well. And that's actually going to dehydrate you faster than you would if you hadn't had that specific substance. And then it impacts your sleep. Remember, this is a stimulant. I think everyone who's had lots of these substances at some point in the day, especially later in the day, knows how it can negatively impact your sleep. And then if you're more restless, it means you're not recovering, which can have a negative impact overall. So how long does caffeine actually stay in your system? So if you drink a cup of coffee or you take a Red Bull or drink a Coke, what's gonna happen? Well, it only takes about 30 to 60 minutes to reach the peak in your bloodstream. So as early as 20 minutes after drinking, it leaves your stomach, it starts to get absorbed through your system, and you're gonna have, after about an hour, peak amount of caffeine in your system. And then the half-life is anywhere from three to five hours, meaning a lot of the caffeine is still going to be in your system hours later. And that's why we talked about that drug test. Two to three hours later, after 500 milligrams, you're still going to test positive for having too much caffeine in your system. And then because the half-life is three to five hours, anywhere from 12, 14, 18, 18 hours after that, you're still gonna have trace amounts of caffeine in your system. Now the moment you've been waiting for, how does caffeine impact your swimming? We already alluded to it in terms of all of these physiological impacts and how long it stays in your system, but a lot of this really does depend on your sex, so men versus women, your body size, composition, your hormonal balance, all of these things actually impact how the caffeine 
caffeine is going to impact your body in the swimming pool. Another conversation to think about is the endurance versus high intensity. So if you're swimming a 25 freestyle and you're trying to go as fast as possible, it's a different energy system that's being required to do that as compared to swimming a 1500 freestyle. And there are various studies out there that have actually shown mixed results. Some studies have shown that in the endurance side, caffeine actually helps you out. Because of what we've talked about earlier, you have a little bit more uh, stimulation throughout, and as long as you're hydrated, like you go for a bike ride, you can actually maintain a high level of output for a longer period of time if you had caffeine compared to if you did not have caffeine. There are other studies that show higher intensity things like a 100 meter freestyle or a 200 IM will actually hinder performance for the inverse of all of the things we just talked about. So really it depends on your body and also your tolerance and what you're used to. So if you're, if you're not used to having caffeine and all of a sudden you have caffeine, it will stimulate your body and theoretically you should have more power output and performance. But let me tell you the thing that most people don't talk about, and it's this last point, it's your mental state and expending energy. Here's an example. Let's say you have a moderate amount of caffeine in your system on a regular basis, you drink one or two cups of coffee per day, and then before your race, or 30 minutes or an hour before your race, you take a Red Bull, or you have some other pre-workout or some increase in caffeine production. So what can happen, because your body's not used to this, you actually start to expend more energy, and it's difficult to actually perform when the time counts. So you're getting ready for your 50 freestyle, you have a Red Bull, and now you're jittery and the stress and the adrenaline, it's all picking up and you've actually wasted a lot of energy before you even start the race. This can be applied to a workout as well. This can happen if you take the caffeine too early or if you have multiple races to worry about or a multi-day competition. Then you factor in the fact that your body's not used to this impulse of caffeine and if you have a multi-day competition or multiple events, you're not gonna be able to sleep at night and get ready for the following day of competition. So if your body is not ready for it and you're not used to it, then it's going to be challenging to actually leverage it because of all these other variables that have to do with your mental state and also using your energy appropriately because now you introduce a new variable into your system or at least you elevated it. So maybe you were used to drinking one or two cups of coffee per day and now you all of a sudden double the amount of caffeine in your system and your body's trying to deal with that in addition to all the emotions and stress and anxiety that comes with being in a competition. So that's something a lot of people don't talk about. There's the performance side, but there's also the mental side as well. So then how much caffeine should you have? We talked about the pros, we talked about the cons, and this fundamentally comes down to your comfort level. If you love drinking coffee and you love your morning cup or two, great, keep doing that. I'm not telling you to drink or not drink coffee or any of the other stuff that we've talked about, but you have to realize there's two important variables here. Number one, remember that coffee is a drug. So what that means is you actually build tolerance to this. So if you have coffee every single day or multiple cups of coffee every day and all of a sudden you completely stop from taking that caffeine into your system, you're gonna have what's called withdrawal. And so your body now has gotten used to a certain amount of caffeine and stimulant in your system and all these variables we talked about from a physiological perspective and now you don't have that. The inverse is true. If you don't have any tolerance and all of a sudden you intro introduce a whole ton of caffeine into your system, like myself, I don't drink coffee and all of a sudden if I have a Coke, I feel amped up more than I already am right now. So that will impact your body differently. So remember, it is a case by case. And keep in mind that the Mayo Clinic recommends up to 400 milligrams a day. That's safe. That's about two to three cups of coffee. Let me know what questions you guys have down below in the comments. How much coffee are you drinking? And of course, if you haven't checked out this video, how alcohol impacts your swimming performance, I think you should check it out. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.